It was this spirit of defiance that took Tunisians to the streets more than two and a half years ago. Now some of those people are calling for a new, completely secular government. They're supporting the opposition coalition known as the Salvation Front. It's a growing force in the country. So we are not asking for a chaos in Tunisia. In the contrary, we are having a very clear uh, roadmap that will lead us to uh, transparent and fair elections in Tunisia. The supporters of Tunisia's main ruling party, Anahda, have also been vocal. They want Tunisians to back a democratic process, and the Islamic party says it's willing to negotiate with the opposition. Anahda has no problem in giving any concessions as long as it is in the interest of the, of the transition, of making the transition shorter and more efficient. For now, Tunisians are in political limbo. The only democratic institution in the country, the Constituent Assembly, has been suspended. And there is no electoral body to organise polls. People are here so they don't just want a legitimate government, but one that can protect them. There have been two political assassinations in the past six months, and there is an armed group carrying out attacks. Tunisians say they are losing trust. The Tunisian army continues to shell this mountain range on the Algerian border. It says armed fighters are hiding here. A National Guard border post was attacked on Monday. All this uncertainty will impact on people like Salah Melotti. He hasn't worked since he graduated in 2000. In some parts of the country, half of people with degrees are unemployed. Everybody is to blame for this situation. The former regime, foreign intrusion in the Tunisian decision-making. The decisions being taken in the country do not take into account the opinion of those who are unemployed. Tunisia has never been so divided. While people continue to take to the streets and leaders fail to sit down and talk, this political uncertainty will grow. Nazani Mashiri, Al Jazeera, Tunis.